Yo, what is going on everybody? I'm your host Baby Spine, and today I'm coming at you all with my tips and tricks video for Blast On. And here I'm gonna lay down the top five things I wish I knew as a beginner in Blast On. So let's get right into it. First up, in tip number one, dodging and movement. Learning how to dodge and move correctly will get you far in Blast On. A good rule of thumb I like to use is always go from one side of your podium and back to the other when dodging so that your opponent can't just shoot straight at you. You also want to get used to turning your head to track the pellets as they pass you because when you turn your head in game, it turns your in-game avatar to the side, allowing you to dodge pellets more effectively. In turn, you should find yourself doing similar movements in real life with your body. Also, be ready to squat and kneel from time to time to avoid walls of pellets that would otherwise hit you standing up. You can always jump over shots that are fired too low, and these are not in-game features. Rather, real-life physical actions you need to perform in order to stay alive. This is one of the many reasons I love Blast On is because it does a fine job of blurring the line between game and physical sport. Another big thing to consider here is that Blast On features out of bounds damage when you go outside of your podium boundary. But what most new players don't know is that your head is the only thing that will trigger the podium shock damage. Your hands and torso are free to float out of bounds and most top players do this to dodge and avoid most incoming fire by going into one of the back pocket corners of your podium and slowly backing out of bounds, making sure to keep your head inside by leaning forward a bit, leaning in and looking down to keep just your head in bounds allows you to slip most things that are fired at you unless your opponent starts hitting your head. Also, when you look down like this in game, your in-game avatar torso will float back into a horizontal position, allowing enemy shots to easily miss and go under you. It's pretty wild because doing this on the edge of your podium makes your body look like it is floating out of bounds, and it is one of the most effective dodging methods in Blast On. Okay, moving on to tip number two, and that is shields counter everything. Almost. Shields and Blast On counter pretty much everything in the game, aside from Majestics that don't have any physical form to block. Regardless, you can still easily sidestep a Majestic and use a shield to block any of the follow-up damage that may be coming your way. Besides Majestics, shields do in fact counter everything else in the game. Most notably, shields counter a lot of the big power weapons like Novas and lasers. One four second Cortex shield can be tossed to destroy all three Novas from a seven second Nova or a 10 second Nova Helix. And a two second Aegis can destroy up to two Novas. A 10 second Lance Rapid can easily be countered by a 4 second Cortex as you can just wait for them to fire all lasers and then pop Cortex, hold it to your chest and reposition through the la lasers to a safer spot. And then you have the big boy Bunker Shield which has 400 HP, you can deploy this and take cover behind it to avoid pretty much everything in the game aside from Majestics and really well placed curved ellipse shots but we'll touch more on that later. Basically. Use shields if you want to increase your survivability against death combos. Shields are not mandatory, but if you want to succeed in high level play, you will need at least one of them. Moving on to tip number three, it's how, it's how to curve ellipse weapons. A lot of new players have no clue how to curve ellipse weapons, but I'm going to give you the basic gist right now. If a weapon has the name Ellipse in its name, then that weapon has the ability to shoot curved bullets, much like in the movie Wanted. This is a very fun, stylish, and skillful thing to do in Blast On. To curve an Ellipse projectile, you want to take note of the glowing trail emitting from the tip of your Ellipse weapon. Try swinging it around now so you can see and recognize this trail. Basically, the direction that you're swinging your arm holding the ellipse weapon indicated by the trail on the tip of the gun is going to be the direction the bullet curves when you shoot it. Practice this on the training dummy until you get the hang of it. Next up, we have tip number four, customs and friendly duels. Look, don't just play ranked or you may get burnout. Create a custom game instead and send a friend the code to come join you in a private unranked duel lobby. You can do this by using the create room option in the main lobby. You can also go to the Ozo lounge by clicking the door 
on the right or the door behind you in the main lobby that has a poster saying Ozo right next to it. Now here in the Ozo lounge, you can meet up with other players, chat, hang out, and even fist bump and thumbs up each other to start a friendly unranked duel. This can often be really good practice for learning to play Blast On with a friend without the stress of ranked and losing LP and all that. And that leads me to my final tip, which is to treat Blast On like you would a physical outside sport. While Blast On may be a VR game, it is very much like a physical sport as well, and you should treat it as such. I recommend an 80 square foot play space as you will need the extra room to safely dodge and jump around in. You also want to be able to kneel often without injuring your knees, so I would consider knee pads if you can't afford any thick gym mats to use. If you have the extra money to shell out though, I would def go for a couple of those double padded 4x10 gym mats to make up your 80 square foot play space. That is what I personally use, which was recommended to me by my good friend Woody Plays. There will be a link in the description to these mats if you're interested in picking some up. I highly recommend getting a VR cover that is either silicone or leather for your VR device as these are very easy to wipe down and this is much better than any kind of stock foam that just absorbs sweat and gets nasty over time. Blaston is going to have you dodging and jumping around a lot in order to stay alive and outplay your opponent. And because of this, when you play Blaston, you'll be getting a good exercise and cardio workout every time you play. But try not to overdo it. When first playing Blaston, you can easily exhaust yourself if you are out of shape or not very physically active in real life. So you're going to have to build up that real life stamina bar with good rest and recovery. Don't force yourself to play when you're tired and sore or you will just play poorly. Instead, get a good night's sleep, come back stronger tomorrow, and be sure to stretch a lot before, during, and after you play Blast On. And most importantly, stay hydrated. It is easy to lose yourself in Blast On, and the last thing you want is to suffer an injury or become dehydrated. Take the headset off, wipe the sweat down from yourself and the device, drink some water. It can become very uncomfortable to play while you're drenched in sweat and thirsty. Take a break, refresh yourself, and come back stronger than before instead of playing till exhaustion. I need it! Well, that wraps up my top five things I wish I knew before I started playing Blast On. If you have any questions or other tips for new players, then be sure to leave them in the comments down below. And if this video helped you, then consider liking and subscribing to my channel here on YouTube because I do educational guides and reviews like this often. Thanks for watching. This is Baby Spine. Out. Peace. Peace. Peace.